All right. Let's uh, pick up where we left off. Got to get my watch off. Can't be scratching my watch up. All right. So we have three files. We, we need to... Um, I think stage one for this video will be getting this data to draw in here. So we work in that title screen. Yeah, we can, that's all right. We can close title screen for now. And let's think about it. We have these data containers. We need to update all of those, right? And so that's every time we load data and we show these nodes, we want to be, we can update them here. And so these actually don't have anything in their script. Uh, so we need a few things. We need references to label or a uh, level. Oh, don't want to do that. I got to go back. We get the value for level. We're gonna get the value for um, HP. I should say the value label. And MP. Just gonna write that one out. That's easy enough. And have our references. Now we want to do. Oh, we have name as well. So it's basically. You know, we've made variants of this thing before. We're just doing it again with a different layout. And then we're gonna have set player. And we're gonna send player through here, it'll be battle actor. And then we have access to everything we need. It's gonna be player. Uh, player.name. Level.text equals string player.level. HP.txt equals string player dot um, HP max. MP.txt equals string player dot HP max. And then in here we want to call a node.set player. Um, make sure that's. We have access to the player. Um. Oh, we only need a few things. We're actually going to send player data through. <coughs> and uh, we'll just do this like so name. Data dot um, so data dot party, and we are going to need we can just use node dot get index and be a little lazy there dot name. Um, so that we're going to do um, and that's the so I think I'm going to need that more often. Or um, let's do player data. Data dot party get um, node dot get index. Do player data dot name. Player data um, level. 
This is kind of sloppy. <laughs> but we're going to roll with it for now. Oh no, let's do... Let's change that. We're going to do... Um, this is going to be player data dot name. Let's just send player data throws a dictionary. Like we were planning on. And... I think that'll work. Let's run that again. I forgot to run the whole thing. It's a set player in base HBox container. Let's see what the problem is there. This is incorrect. This should not be here. Uh, we actually have to loop through. It's for. this and we're gonna do dot get children we're gonna do for um, node in these we're gonna do node dot set player uh, oh crap I just lost the code that I had go back All right um, copy that again and then redo and just replace that in here and if we actually, no, nah, that's fine. Take out that comment and let's see if it works. Okay, so it's, it's a couple things. Obviously we're not updating the, um, the sprite and so we need a reference to that. <coughs> Even though, I think we'll do player GUI at the bottom. Uh, set um, sprite atlas, and it's going to be player data dot Let me think of that. Go to battle actor. So job sprite sheets. Let's um. Oh, excuse me. Um, set sprite atlas. I almost feel like <clears throat> save and load. Uh, maybe. Maybe we should be calling this every time we load that. But it's kind of unnecessary. It's a set player. And remember, I'm gonna go over this code um, and you can copy it then. Uh, I really wouldn't bother with copying it right now because I'm still modifying things and trying to figure it out. I didn't mention that in this part, but I did in the, um, the previous part that we were using here. So anyway, set player, we're going to do something like go to player data display. It's going to be the atlas will be battle actor um, that's job sprite sheets and that's going to be player data dot job. <coughs> We'll have to get the palette as well. I don't think I'm saving that right now. But we can see if their jobs are updating. It's just they're all at um, palette index zero. And for some reason, <laughs> the first one's backwards. Maybe I did that in the formation, I'm not sure. Let's take a look. Yeah, see, it's not even, like, we have to update these to load the right ones as well. Um, 
let's check out Battle Actor. Make sure I have Palette Index. We have Character Index. So we need to use uh, Set Character Index. That's going to be um, dot Character Index. And we have to convert that. to key to that. Let's see if that works. Yeah, cool. So you can see our classes update as well. I don't think we want them walking by default. up here. Um, so we need to be able to check if playing. Is playing. <clears throat> no return on frame advanced dot is stops. I'm going to do um, not frame advances stops. And then here we're going to do if um, sprite sheet animation dot is playing. If not, now the sprite sheet can handle that when we set. We'll just do that. Here, colon. So we don't want these people walking, but they're walking anyway. Need to get it before we said that. So is playing or equals this, and we do if not is playing. We're just gonna make sure it idles. All right, cool. Now, so we have that working. I need to set a minimum size on these. Let's do that, and that should update it automatically. Yeah. No, what's going on? See how that first one, the, the text kind of jumps out. Well, that could be why I, I changed the wrong value. There we go. Now nothing's jumping around. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> we also want to get world all this data. Need references to them. Need 
needs money and location. dot text equals player data dot um, current location uh, we have money this is something weird. we just have to call data dot player equals Yeah, I think we do. Something like um, clock dot total seconds equals data dot total seconds. Then we set the time. Data dot current location does not exist. Current room. Data dot total seconds time. All right, cool. So I think first priority, now that we have this pretty much functioning how we want, uh, we can get out of there. We do want to get the title screen back up. This we're done with for now. And so I'll put that in front, then we have game. So we go to game. And so we do that. We probably need to have a target room in globals. So what we want to do is get a reference to that, <clears throat> which I apparently can't do from there. So our save load, uh, current room is going to default to that path. And then we want to update when we save game. So it's going to be get current scene Let's look up uh, in scene tree. We want to look at current scene. 
So we want to be able to get the path. Which I think would just be, let's see. I get, get node and resource. Up to get <coughs> get path. Uh, this is be current scene dot get path. Okay. I think we do. If get tree dot current scene equals um, let's do this. No, that won't work. Um, this is incorrect. Let's do current scene node equals this. All right, let me check if current scene is game. We do this. So we current um current scene dot what game do we have? It's going to be game.currentScene. It's a little confusing, I know, but it's because game holds current scene. Otherwise, we're not going to override the um, current room. And then we'll change that to current scene. We just have to update every time we, we change that. We'll keep it consistent. Um, current scene. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna update all of that. Save load. Save that. And one more in globals. Current scene path. Um, no target. <clears throat> Get on the globals in title screen. We're going to change that back. So we get the current scene path from data. That's where we saved. And we're going to send that to target scene path. And then we go to game. And then what we want to do is check. In here, um, if globals dot target scene path not equal, um, we'll just check if that's a path. Then what we want to do is transit trans <laughs> transition scene. That's going to be. Um, So we have to turn that into load. Well, actually, it's on ready, so we can do preload. That won't work. Load global stop. Sorry. We have to set the spawn position. It's going to be save load dot loaded data dot player position. Uh, and that's we have to divide it by. Um, 20. Let's 
janky, I know, and then we have spawn facing, so it'll just be um, vector two dot down, just to get this thing working. I'll fix that in a sec. So we have globals dot target scene path equals blank. Resource doesn't match the functions expected. Oh, we have to do um, load and then instance. <coughs> That broke. String and int in operator. <sighs> let's let's print that. See what we get. Overworld. So we're gonna do um, target scene node equals this, and we put that in there. We're only gonna do it if. If um print scene uh, equals current scene equals target scene, then we only want to update player's position. You know what? We don't really want to do the transition. Like, uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Else we do the full transition. <clears throat> oh, it's so close, I feel. Um, oh, I have to convert that. Back to key to back to array. And so we convert that divided by 20. Nice. Reset, uh, go back here. That's just because we never set their position on those new files. We'll fix that. Do a debug. Is there a way I can reload the whole game? Um, change scene. I'm just gonna put the uh, title screen. So when I press R, we're gonna go back to the title screen, which it does not like. So we're gonna have to do um, get new or null. That's not gonna work either. We need to do um, is instance valid globals dot player. Let's see if the reload works now. It does. Um. The last thing that game needs is a boolean to turn on or off the transition. So we'll do false. <coughs> do it by default. 
that. So we have this to if animate. We can probably keep that. No. So that should get rid of that, and then we'll we'll worry about the animation later. So for now, we have that. It just looks better than you know, having it be janky. Okay, cool. My right restart. We can load up different players. Different party, different save file. If I hit save and we restart, uh, why was that happening? So that's not the name of it anymore. We need to use. Do that and um, let me see. Name. Just do that for default down here at save game. Do that and we do loaded data dot currency name equals. Current scene dot name. <laughs> so we do that. <laughs> All right, that should be good. That way I can use it beneath it. Oh my gosh. Current room. Current scene name. Target scene path. <clears throat> Save load. When we load, we're merging it with the data template, which means we should be getting the new things. So globals, world map. Is that path just not right? Do I have to add the dot TC TSCN? Bear with me. I'm going to go, I have to delete one of the files so that I can test this. I guess I can do that through code, though. So we'll do that. Oops. 
too. So we'll always delete the last one just for testing. Cool. So I'm making a new one. Uh, oh, is it freezing now? <coughs> Making it here. Making it there, but it's not showing up. Let's give it another go. player that's all right why are we not seeing that dun, dun. save load save game I'm gonna hide that thing that's why So have a new party, and that does load in. So I think it was just an issue with um, that data previously existing or something. So now I want to go back to File Select, rather um, go to Title Screen. So we're always going to clear those, and just for Right now, I want to delete the first one as well. So we're going to run that. And did that not work? It must have loaded before we called that. And that's all right. So we'll get rid of that. Maybe I'll comment that out. <coughs> so we're going to make a new file. And I'm going to load in okay. now save load. Where are we checking for player? Um, let's get rid of that. No. Um, and so we have to check on game. Data dot player position. So I think only if we're doing that, we're going to do our um, So I just realized I'm not parsing that there either. We do need to get this up here. And we're gonna check if player position equals globals dot null cell player position. Um, no, I take it back. If it's not equal to that, It's not equal to that, we divide it. Uh, I think you can do that, right? Divide equal um, 20. And if the current scene equals target scene,
<clears throat> then we're going to make that. Do that. Actually, if it equals that, then we want it to be. No, I'm sorry. Let's pull this back. And. Now, if it's the null cell, we don't want to mess with player position. So if it's still not equal to null cell, and no, we do if current scene, we do that, and if player position, this is probably a bit half-assed, I apologize, but it's going to work. <coughs> it's just not the most elegant. And now we don't have to convert this anymore down here. I think spawn cell, we do check if it's equal to null cell down there. So we're making a new one. Again, we have to do is instance valid. This is pretty much just because of uh, that reload function I have. <coughs> so we'll make a new one and we'll go in there. I right, can see it spawned us in the right position. That's beautiful. We can reload. It's not doing it for that one. I think because we changed how we handle the save load. I think it's time I close some tabs. So to start on this new one, we're going to clear everything again. I'm going to comment that out and make a new one, select it, and now we're at the right position. I should be able to go to all the way down to the beach. We can enjoy the, the ocean and we're going to save and we're going to restart. Now I go back. Okay. What's the issue there? Instance and base null instance. So I have to see why the path is not working. Base null instance. Maybe we do Let me do this up top. And when we print the path. That's the problem right there. We're getting the path, but really we want the file path. So that whole thing is incorrect in um, save load. So we want to get that. And... Get. Get scene data. Yeah. <laughs> 
<clears throat> I don't think we're using new game. And what the heck did I need to do? We need to fix how we get the path. Let's go take a look at that. Go to the internet. Um, Godot, get a scene path. Yeah, there we go. Does that not work? Current scene dot file name. Okay. through here. We're going to replace that with current scene file name. <clears throat> Let's just find them all first. Let me go down the back into that. We're going to do um, <coughs> Hitting the wrong thing. That'd be replace. Looks all good. Reload, I think. Now, make sure we're clearing that. <clears throat> make a new one. Load it. Now we want to go and save it. We want to restart and see. Oh my gosh, what? Do all this nice and fun. Did that just mess up what I did here? Market scene equals node. Let's actually put that up at the top. <clears throat> um. Where did that loading go? So I need this. Oh, it's down here. Make sure globals is updated. Our scene file name looks good. Needs to be following. <coughs> All right, so that works. I'm gonna try just not saving. See, and then, then we'll go save, reload. It's still crashing. I don't understand that. We are printing it out. It's still giving me that.
I must be storing the wrong thing here. Yeah, we still have, because it reloaded. That's why. I did a reload. Okay, we're gonna do that. Make new. Okay, looks good. Then we save. Reload. But our position's not saved now. Test. So we're gonna save this. We're gonna reload. We're gonna make a new file. See that? Okay. So that one works fine. A reload. And well, that's an issue. The when we reload, this just needs to be called one time. Second one. I'm gonna go into here, save, reload. Okay, so we still have that. We can see that's broken. This one works. So it has to do with when we save in the field menu. So we're calling save game. Look at player. Why would the player position be zero? Let's do this. We'll print global stop player at global. So we have that, right? Um, I think I know why. I'm not 100%. I think this is wrong. Yep, that is wrong, wrong, wrong. We need to do this check. This needs to be um, divided by 20. Only down there, because we're sending in, we need it to be a cell for that. And Fortunately, we have to do that check twice, I think. We'll do that, and then... Um, we do this here. It's five equals. Okay, so it's not a problem with their data. It was how we were parsing it. As you can see now. I'm sorry, that code, um, it, it really kind of sucks. Like I'm, you know, this kind of stuff is not my forte. I can get through it. It's just, it doesn't always look pretty or maybe it's just the code starts getting really complicated and, uh, 
and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like working with it, but I just kind of push through it. So, a couple things. First off, why are those exactly the same? Is that correct? Those are different. All right, I'm gonna reload. Wow, what are the odds of that happening? We have the same exact palettes. I mean, that's four different characters, and then you have eight different indexes. That must be, uh, I doubt that's really random. Okay. Location. All right with that. Okay, the next big step, and I, I think I can get at least a dent in this while in this video, is we need to actually roll our stats. <clears throat> this is what, parse data. Uh, excuse me. Ugh. Init player. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to take this. It's getting a little confusing. We have all these different initializers. Um, and we need initial stats. That's going to be based on the job. Clear experience. And so we can organize this in how? How do we organize it? <coughs> mm. I'm going to cheat. Actors, let's take a look. Grab all of that and go back in here. Now it's going to need some updating. If friendly, class script, let's just get rid of that for now. Set so stat weights and equipment types based on class.
already have Thief. Let's just pull that. Delete these other ones. And classes, we're gonna match case, we're gonna change it to job. And this needs to be bumped back. <clears throat> Stats with weights. Did I just delete that or something? Oh, that's in the, that's a top level thing, okay. Not doing that. I think we will add that friendly variable. We init on knit player. Actually, this is only for the player now, because <coughs> I'm manually setting the stats for uh, the whatchamacallits, <laughs> the, let's get rid of this first, well, let's keep it in, in case we need, no, we don't have individual inventories, we're already doing that, and this is going to be that. Don't need that. Don't need that for now. Just get rid of that. Don't need that. Um, don't need any of that. Um, use that. Get class string, that's just going to be um, jobs. Uh, keys. Uh, get stats array. We may. <laughs> this is a lot. Stat weights. White mage kind of has too much action here. Yeah, it's based on Dragon Quest Three Cleric. I think for now they're just gonna get this. It'll be the same as that. <laughs> oh, get stats array. Gonna evolve to a knit player. We don't. We're not dealing with item names anymore. And so then we're gonna take this stuff and put that up in a knit player. And um, this will be 
knit layer. Let me send through all of that. But for now, let's just get rid of that. And we're going to put that up here. Oh, what was going on there? I just have to get rid of this. <laughs> Not using that anymore. <clears throat> so weapon types. Bar weapon types. All right. We're gonna have so those are the weapon types. And so warrior can use you're just going to be using. Maybe you can rock a staff too. You're just going to be limited to <coughs> dagger and sword. Staff dagger. Then we need to actually add the weapon types. Which maybe we'll grab from items. <laughs> Screw sword, dagger, staff, club, right. armor type. Need that. It's just going to be an in. Zero. Negative one. Da -da -da. Da -da. Light. Medium. Heavy. Change that. Uh, don't need that. I'm gonna do this. More enemies. Plus, oh no, it looks pretty good. I'll need these. We need that anymore. And a knit player. Oh, what 
the hell is that? Do so if not roll stats turn. We're gonna need that stuff. Only if we're rolling stats and Otherwise, we'll have this data already. This needs to be called up top. Here we do false. <clears throat> yeah, so in here we do true because it's the first time we're adding them. If I save that, it should update. Come on, update, init player, should update. So the idea is um, we set our, our stat weights based on the class and these stats are um, we put them in this order, and so that too corresponds with strength, that resilience, speed, HP max, MP max, right? Uh, these guys don't use MP, so they have a 0% chance to roll um, an MP stack gain. So we do that for each of the, the classes, and then we append the stats with... Um, stat weights I guess I, I don't what the hell's going on here <laughs> stat. so stats with the weights what the we append the stat with the stats weights um okay <laughs> so we do that and then we level up so I think level always needs to be one at the beginning. Make sure we have that. We do. And so the calculate on level up, that's right down here, uh, which I'm actually going to move it up since this function calls it. <coughs> HP, change. HP change needs value change on this uh, we'll just put zero so when we do this we don't want to print out any kind of like hit text so that looks good and I don't know I'm gonna go through all this later I really just want to get it done <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll do all the explaining at another time I'm just gonna kind of crack down here uh, there's a lot <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts going on right now. Okay. So data. Let's get data open. <clears throat> Now data is where we really need, it's going to be battle actor dot init player. And we're actually going to do that in ready. 
just comment that out and I do um, for I in range uh, four I do uh, party dot append battle actor dot uh, first party clear uh, init and a player. <clears throat> so we look at battle actor and then we get init random player in. We have to return that player as well. So we battle actor. Uh, can't, I don't. Maybe it doesn't work like that. Let's just do. Let's stick it to that. We go to data, we're gonna do um, we're gonna call yeah, we'll put that in there. We also wanna do player dot init random player. <coughs> player names dot neutral oh so those are arrays of names I think I have these at the top up here let's look player names dot neutral Um, I must have had that somewhere. We'll find the player names. Here we go. And what I can actually do, let me just throw that in here. And we save, it should pop up. I have to open it once. So this just has a bunch of names. Gotta get Bongo. And that should update. Mm. We're gonna get rid of the gender one. Look 
get an array of pen. I think names equals array. Um, that does not return anything, so we just do names.append array gmail names.append array um, neutral. We're going to go back to battle actor and I don't care about taking names right now. It's going to be player names. Uh, names. It's not going to be job. This needs to be changed. We can just do. Um, Job equals util dot choose jobs dot values. We have to send these through. And now it's all right. Party index. Sorry, that has to be static. Index zero, base array of value of type. Oh, because I cleared party. We don't want to do that. See it was working. And we want that because then I can run, oops, I can skip the title screen for debugging. And I should have a party. You can see all the names are loaded. And the, the jobs. And the stats. But we, we still need to do the character indexes. And the stats. But you can see that the stats are randomized. They are based on weights. Uh, shoot.
two lines like that. So that should give us a random character index to begin with. And that should be getting set. Let's see the character index is working. Now we have to send, we have to get the texture. In the, um, the player GUI. Set it. <clears throat> Player Gooey. We'll set Sprite. Atlas. We can check everywhere we're calling that. And player menu card. Player data display. That's fine. Run scheme. There we go. Nice. Go back to the title. What I'm going to do is have for our. Um, That's not right. Do four. Um, save that now we just click on this and I can toggle this on to uh, reset our files I think what we want to do is yield get tree file frame just so those will clear um, for sure and we can turn these off I might clear the last two we make them. But, but, but. Oh, those aren't randomizing. We need them to randomize every time we enable. Where 
where do we randomize it? I guess the, the box handles that. <clears throat> Do we want that to true? And this is going to be when we, um, Every time we, we set enable, it's already grabbed that. We want to do it. Oh no, these don't have enabled. Um, Now we can call that every time we set enabled. We do if on, we want to loop through our player creation boxes. So, see that's different now. Um, try and save it. Yeah, I can't because we don't have the names. We'll just restart. See how they're randomizing each time. That's what we're looking for. And let's see what happens when we load in. So there are a couple things. Well, one, the job is not updating correctly there. So I need to check that out. Call init player, do we call that down? Let me parse the data, yeah. So I think title screen, we're gonna clear the first file and then do some debugging on that. And it looks like that yield doesn't do anything, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. That's not the right function anyway. I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about that crap. Uh, oh shit! All right, I need to go back to um, these crappy fake names so I can make a file quickly. We load that. We can see our jobs are not loading now. I don't know how we lost that. Um, it loads in there, but not in the field menu. And Player menu card, player dot texture. Which 
we get from that. And we are setting that correctly. Um, so let's make sure that this code's getting called. And can I open that? Is it not an atlas texture? Maybe that's it. No, it is. So let's see. Make a new file. Load that in. Let's see. Yes, gets called there. Or it's. It might be getting called elsewhere, like on equipment. No, it's not getting called there. Not there. Let's print layer.texture. No, 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 no. Interesting. That could be a problem. Am I not loading in the party? What the heck's going on? It's weird because I swear we had we had those job texture sheet sheets loading in before. So I think that is, oh, I see, okay. Let's get rid of that for now. Happening. In there, make them go to that warrior. I don't know why down there it's all zero, zero, zero. Let's make job. Let's make a negative one. What is going on with this? The job is set. Am I not setting texture? We set it right there. We can try, um, See if that works. I don't freaking know. 
That does work. So, I don't know. I don't know why the heck. Oh, I know why. Yeah, let's not even bother with setting that. We'll make a function called um, get texture later. So we fix that. We can reload. We can make a new file. They're all random. We can load them in. We'll see they're in there. I think they're in the same order. Is that? Oh, we lost our files. Let's see. I need to turn off the title screen. Save the first one. So I'm going to reload. reload. I want to get one that I like. Okay, so they load in there. We reload. Everything in the first slot saves. <coughs> now, one of the final things I need to do before tackling uh, this problem here, where I have to actually implement all these new stats and XP and leveling up, um, is we need to send that sprite to the player. And that's actually really easy. Go to ready. Do um, sprite. Shoot animation. That's set sprite. Let's just not have equals. Um, so it's going to be battle accurate dot uh, job sprite sheets. And it's going to be um, data dot party zero. We get the first um, party member, and then we're going to get their job. It's not all. So we need player. Um, let's go player. What do I call it? Let's just say player data. And so we need player data dot job. We want to set sprite sheet animation dot uh, character index equals player data dot character index. So is that working? The character index is not working. So let's look at our uh, sprite sheet animation. We need to call set character index instead. That's very nice. And let's see everything saves. And the next thing I want to add is a way to cycle through the um, party. And I think we're just going to do that with player. Um. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We're gonna copy code from let's check our status menu. It might be it's not in that it's in the player equipment window. We're gonna take this code. We're gonna put that in player. And I think it's gonna be an extension of their unhandled input. I get this and um, if handled L if uh, we do this, so we want that. You know what we can do else that. 
this down there, and then we're going to bump that. Get tree. That's, uh, that's handled. Now we want. Um, let's see. Not party index and equal zero. And oh, <laughs> I need a break, man. So, this needs to be bumped in there. We don't need that. Right, we'll put this at the bottom now. And we're going to need um, index direction. Because I'm already using direction, I think. Maybe not. Let's see. Player index, so it's going to be party index now. No, we'll do player index. And data dot party set player. Um, and we're going to make that into a function. I'm going to take this down to here. And player index is N. Down here, we call set player index. So now, when I press the, um, I don't even remember what I set them to, bracket keys, maybe? Oh, we're getting it, but it's not updating. Layer data. Um... So that input is getting consumed. So what are we getting here? We are getting there. What the hell is printing null? Is that the um, player menu card? Yeah, let's get rid of that crap. We don't need that now. So let's clear and test again. All right. That, uh, let's print n. Right. Interesting. Here. That's weird. What's going on here? Maybe direction is somewhere else. If direction, you know, direction equals negative one. All right. All right, so it's not receiving. How is that possible? How are we getting to here? And it's not receiving that. What the? All right, left shoulder, right shoulder. That's what I'm pressing. Does event have? Uh,
I need to figure out how to, yeah, as text. Print, print, as text. Look at all that. Rerun it. Okay. Bracket left, bracket right. What? Yeah, it's telling me I'm pressing that. That works. Nothing. Now I'm not even getting. Okay, now it's back. in there. Let's see if these guys are getting it. Like when I'm out of the menu. No, they're not. Throw this up here just to see what happens. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What? We use the same code in a different script and it works fine. Let's see something here. Let's go to equipment. All right, you can see it's the same text. What the F? I might have to, maybe that's a sign I need to take a break and then come back with fresh eyes. Let's see. All right, so the reload did not work. Is it getting handled before? I don't see how. Let's look anywhere we're calling that. Is this one eating it? I 
right, so we go here. Uh, we'll just print dad. Oh, there's our problem. So magic submenu. Let's take a look. Do we just need to call set enable false? That doesn't mess with that though. Field sub menu. I feel like we do want that. All right. There we go. Let's see if magic still works. Yeah. Um, whoops. I broke my menu. Uh, this still works. Back out magic. All right, cool. So that was the problem. The 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 input was getting consumed in submenu magic. We can clean up player now. We don't need all these prints. That was a goofy mistake on my part. Let's try it one more time. That's good. All right, cool. Whoa. Wow. Wait, what? <laughs> what is? <laughs> Why are they spinning? What? Oh, we have to update the um, the position of the texture. We, whenever we change the texture, um, I think the problem is we're we're probably setting the texture directly. Yep, so we need to call set texture. That is, um, so on me, that's just bad, bad coding habit right there. That I should probably make, well, no, I can't make texture local because of this? Because it's built in? Let's just see if this works. So we're changing. Yeah, see how it's updating the frame correctly now? We're not like rotating. That look weird. That's weird. What? Maybe we have to change the character index first. Yeah, it's just an order issue, I think. Okay. There, gooey, good, 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 good. That looks good. Actor. Um, I guess that's fine. All right, I think that's a great spot to end. I'm just gonna double check my saving. We do need some kind of save indicator. So I can reload, you can see we're still at that position. I can go back, we can make a new file and so we have different characters, everything looks right, all of our menus work, 
we're in a great spot. I'm gonna end there. Sorry, I know this video is probably a little bit rough. Uh, it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of moving parts all at once, and it's kind of overwhelming. And they're the kind of things that I don't do a lot of, and so it's it's always a little tricky. But we're getting there. Um, I mean, honestly, like a lot of the hard stuff is is done at this point. But we'll work on stats in the next video, and then maybe we'll get going on making a our first hostile area where we can uh, lead up to a boss fight. All right, let me know if you have any questions, any feedback. It's always appreciated. Um, yeah, good luck making your game. I'll see you later.